Welcome to Simple Entomology for the Fly Tire and Fly Fisherman, Part 2. I'm Raj Kletke, and today we're going to fish this wooded stream in the middle of summer. We feel like fishing a dry fly, but we see no active rising fish. What would be a reasonable fly to start with? How about an ant? Ants are extremely numerous in practical all environments, and trout love ants. There are some that estimate that ants comprise greater than 10% of the animal mass on land. Note the body structure with the very prominent abdomen, thin waist, and prominent head. The thorax on this species is quite prominent also, but many species have a very tiny thorax. Note also the extent of the legs. Let's tie a simple foam ant. We're going to tie our foam ant on a size 14 hook. I usually use black 2 to 3 millimeter thick foam and cut it approximately the width of the hook gap or slightly narrower. I have marked where I want the abdomen to end with my fingernail and then placing the foam on the near side of the hook, I tightly bind it into place allowing it to rotate to the top of the hook but not to the far side. I then create the very narrow waist that we saw in the ants previously, and then noting how spread the legs were on the ants that we saw, I will add some hackle at this point to give the impression of legs. After stripping a few fibers in the usual fashion, I attach the hackle near the top of the hook and taking one to no more than two wraps around the hook gives me the impression of legs that I want. I then tie off the hackle in the usual fashion. I can then clip the excess hackle at this point or temporarily leave it in place while I wind the hook with thread forward to where I want the neck to be. I then reposition the foam and tie it tightly in place on the top of the hook, creating a relatively small thorax. And again, I'll be adding the heckle as before, giving a wide spread to the ant legs. Incidentally, ants vary in size from quite large to quite small, sometimes even within the same colony, so size usually is not critical. I generally tie them in size 14 to 16, but do occasionally go smaller. After again one to two wraps of hackle, I tie the hackle off and then bring the thread forward to the eye of the hook and use the whip finish for tying the thread off. Incidentally, ants do come in multiple colors. That has not been a major issue, and I tie practically all of my ants in black. After completing the whip finish twice, again, so I don't have to use head cement, I simply clip the thread, clip the excess hackle, and then similar to what we did on the beetle, turn the fly over and create a head that I think matches the ant. You can see that the architecture of this simple ant does have that trilobed appearance of the ants that we saw earlier and does have a spread of legs. Again, this is the simple ant as seen from the top with the trilobed nature and as seen from the bottom with the trilobe nature. So how well does this simple foam ant fulfill Hewitt's factors? 
At a distance, it creates a slight globular indentation in the surface of the water, and as it approaches the trout, it has a sharp silhouette that is trilobed and a thin waist. Additionally, the hackle fibers look like legs. A normal ant is somewhat helpless in the current, and so I fish this dead drift. The legs of a normal ant may create small eddy currents, in other words, micro movement, and I think the hackle fibers can serve the same purpose, causing micro movement, which the fish mistakes as life and therefore as something edible. The size of the fly varies and the color of the fly can vary, but otherwise all ants have a similar silhouette. There are many additional excellent patterns for ants on the internet and in various books. This one is tied with thread creating the lobes and has a relatively short waist. It has only two lobes, while I prefer three, but I doubt trout count the number of lobes. The lobes on this ant pattern are tied with very soft material, and this pattern has a very long waist. Note that both of these ant patterns use hackle for the ant legs. I tie a pattern very similar to this with soft absorbent material for the lobes and soft hackle for the legs. This allows my pattern to sink as many ants do drown and some trout prefer to eat their ants below the surface. Another useful variant is to add wings to any of the ant patterns that we've already looked at. The wing material can be your choice. I commonly use antron or polypropylene. Swarms of winged ants will occasionally fall on a stream causing selective feeding as opposed to the opportunistic feeding that we're talking about in this video. Selective feeding will be covered in a later video. Some fishermen feel that trout ignore extraneous features such as the fish hook but look for positive features. This particular pattern has the lobes of an ant, the legs of an ant, the wing of an ant, and even covers the two most common colors of an ant, black and cinnamon. I've not fished with this fly as I just recently found it on the internet, but I do like the concept. The ants and terrestrial beetles that we've discussed so far do have one form of a fairly typical insect life cycle. However, only the adult stage is commonly available to trout and therefore of interest to the fly fishermen. Nevertheless, we'll start with some basic entomology now, as knowing the life cycle will be important for some of the flies that we'll be discussing and tying in future videos. This is a beetle larva, and these are ant larvae. Note that they do not look anything like the mature adult. More importantly, they do not have the body parts of the adult and therefore have to undergo a complete change to become an adult. Logically enough, this complete change in morphology is known as complete metamorphosis. Note that during the larval stage, the organism is growing, while during the pupa stage, it is transforming to an adult. Both the beetle and ant undergo complete metamorphosis. We will talk about incomplete metamorphosis in the next video. The first two videos of this series have quickly covered beetles and ants, two of what I feel are the three most important terrestrials for the fly fishermen. The next video will be covering grasshoppers, which I feel are one of the most fun dry flies to fish with. We'll also be covering a little more basic entomology. See you soon.